Good morning, good morning, good morning. <sighs> well, this is the time of year that we all decorate the pagan tree. <laughs> and some of us light bonfires and dance around and welcome the solstice. <laughs> Which really is what the season is all about, is the solstice. Uh, just to get it off my chest, Jesus was not born in the, the winter. Jesus was born in the summer. They called for the time for the counting and the taxing in the summer, not the winter. And the reason that we have Christmas in December is the solstice. Because we took all the pagans and said, you're not really celebrating the solstice, you're celebrating Jesus' birth. And they were all busy dancing around the fire, you know, and they said, whatever you want is put in. <laughs> and then hundreds of years later, they were saying, we're celebrating Jesus' birth. <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> There's so much information, misinformation, but we won't go there. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to look at what is happening on a physical level and then to take it into a spiritual level and see what is there for us. And so on a physical level, this is the time where the earth is as far away from the sun as it will get. The nights are the longest. Actually, the temperature lags behind the distance to the sun, so it's not the coldest. It will get colder. But this is as far away from the sun as we're going to get. Happens right before the moment of the turn. And then what happens is that the Earth in its orbit returns to the light. And it is a cause for celebration. Because as we get closer to the light, things begin to shift. You can have plants that have all of the right temperature, but if they don't have the days of light a certain length of time, a certain number of hours of light, they will not bloom. And I've tried that. I've tried forcing plants to bloom outside of their normal cycle, but you've got to have the, the little Grolux lights on them to get them to think that the days have gotten longer because as the earth comes back to the sun, things shift. There's an internal clock within us that we are all aware of. And I would like us just to tune into that internal clock on the physical level and use it as an opportunity to look at where we are on a spiritual level. Because nobody likes the dark night of the soul. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes being away from the light. Nobody likes being in darkness, at least not that many people. There are those people who really like the darkness, but there are, there are not that many people who really like being in the darkness. We crave the light. And I think that we crave the light on a spiritual level, and we act it out on a physical level. I do it by going to the beach, because I love the sun. But I think that I'm getting something more than a physical experience of sunshine when I do that. So what would it be to return to the light on a spiritual level? And just, just to, to go back to what light I'm talking about, and I will be very brief in my biblical, biblical quotes, I assure you. In Genesis 1-3, God, whatever that is, said, let there be light. Now it wasn't until Genesis 1-16 until the sun was made. So the let there be light is not sunshine. There's a light. There's a vibration. There's an energy that happened long before the creation of the physical universe. And I think that that is the light that we crave. That is the light that we can symbolically return to during this time of solstice celebration. As the earth comes back to the sun, we can use that as an outward metaphor for the inward experience of returning to the light. And it's the light that's within each one of us. And just one more Bible quote, I'm, I promise. And that would 
would be in the Gospel of Thomas, the one that did not make it into the Bible because it was too esoteric. And the people, they said the people could not understand it. I think they were thinking the people should not understand it. When Jesus said, if they ask you where you have come from, tell them you have come from the light. Ooh. Where'd you come from? I didn't come from this town or that town. I didn't come from here or there. I came from the light. And we are light beings. And so when we get away from the light, the, the natural essence that we are, it's important for us to remember to return to it. To move, to change our focus, to return to the light, to go back to the natural state that we are. And, you know, look, people who have known me for any length of time know I do not like to dwell on negatives. I don't like to dwell on the story. And I certainly don't want to hear whining about your story. You may have <laughs> conditions and experiences in your life, but you created those. And you created those for a reason. You created those as an opportunity to heal and to grow into a greater expression of the divine that you are. So you've got a story. So you may be in the darkness. You may be in the abyss. You may be in, as the native people say, sitting in the west. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm sitting in the west. Oh, bummer. I'm so sorry that you're sitting in the west. Because we've got the east, the light, the south, prosperity, abundance, family, joy. You've got the east, new beginnings, the light coming up. And the west is darkness. The west is the time of going into the cave of growing and healing and all of that and often it comes with such a burden but I tell you the burden is all put on by us. Sitting in the West is only about healing and growing because as soon as you get done healing and growing you spin around into the North and the North is all about the wisdom that you have gotten from the healing that you have been willing to do. That which you have gotten, the gift that you have gotten from being willing to let go of that which no longer serves you. And so we spin round and round, but we don't spin round and round like that. We do an upward spiral very much like the DNA spiral as we evolve in consciousness. So I don't like to spend a lot of time in the darkness, but we all do it. Whether or not we spend a second or a decade is totally up to us. But we've got to hit that point of going within and healing something before we can go into the wisdom and then continue around in the circle. And what we've learned on the spiritual path is that we don't want to be stagnant, but we want to spin this spiral growth so that we can go higher and higher and higher in our growth. And so what do we do when we hit the west? What do we do when we're in the darkness? We go to the light. Don't sit there. You know, they, they, uh, uh, you're, you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't stop. <laughs> Don't pitch a tent. Don't build condos and invite all your friends in. And you invite your friends in by telling them all about your woes. And then they buy in and go, oh, yeah, this is terrible. Oh, it's just so awful. And then they're in the darkness. And you call it support. You call it friendship and understanding. I tell you, a good friend is one who gets in your face and says, knock it off. Suck it up, cupcake. Move on. Let it go. That's a good friend. This came to pass and not to stay. If it's staying, it's because you're holding on to it. The natural evolution of life is for it to move. Because you're spinning, and you may hit that time of darkness, but that is simply the outpicturing of whatever it is you are willing to let go of. I want to be prosperous. Well, you got to let go of all of your stinking, thinking, negative, limiting beliefs about who you are. And so they come in and you go, oh, it's too hard and it's too much. You created that. You said, I want to be prosperous. Well, you want to be prosperous, you're a student of Barbara Waterhouse, start by tithing. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Well, then stay poor. Totally up to you. I want to be in a wonderful, loving relationship. 
Well, then stop criticizing people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people are not nice to me, because you're not nice to them. Um. <laughs> I want to be healthy. Well, get off the couch. God is in the donut, but God is in other things, too. <laughs> I want to be healthy. Well, stand butt naked in front of a full-length mirror and start loving that body. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be successful. Well, try something new. I might fail. Okay. So what? So you fail. Well, if I failed, I would be so embarrassed. So you'd rather not be embarrassed than be a failure in life all along the whole thing because you never tried anything. How do you want to end this life? I mean, really, if you can go forward to the end of your days on this earth, do you really want to have not tried something new? Do you really want to not have been willing to look at yourself clearly and let go of that which does not work for you? If you want to end your life that way, you'll live the rest of your life in the darkness. If you want to get out of the darkness, you must return to the light. Don't you realize that the powerful spiritual being that you are is bigger than any of these experiences? That the only reason you're bringing them up in your life is so that you can let go of them and grow and transcend them and go beyond them? I want to be a magnificent, glorious, powerful, creative spiritual being alive and well on planet Earth. Then you must stop playing small. You have to be willing to let go of your attachment to darkness, to turn away from the condition, to stop telling your story about the poor me's, and to move to the light. And when you get into the light, everything else goes away. Because the light is that which has power. Darkness has no power. If darkness had power, you would be able to bring a little jar of darkness in to a lit room in the middle of the night, take, catch some darkness outside, put it in a jar, <laughs> bring it inside, and then let it go in the room, and the room would get dark. It doesn't work that way. You can take a dark room and light one candle, and the room will lighten up. Because the light has the power. Actually, if you want to go back to Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light, and there was light, and then he separated the darkness from the light. The darkness was actually part of the light. <laughs> but I thought darkness was bad. No, there's no bad. There's only God. The darkness was a part of the light. So if you're in the darkness, the light is there. You're already in the light. You just aren't seeing it. And chances are you're not seeing it because you're going, there's only darkness, there's only darkness, there's only darkness. Wait a minute, Barbara said, turn to the light. Light. It was there all the time. Turn to that light within you. Turn to that within you that knows what to do, where to go, how to do it. You know, some people, and, and even some people in this teaching, maybe not in the center, <laughs> but certainly in this teaching, some people like the drama. Some people get close to the abyss and they take a running jump and dive in head first. <laughs> Some people like the experience, the helplessness, the hopelessness, the not having to have any responsibility because I'm in the darkness. Oh, it's just too hard, it's just too much. I know that God is all of that there is, but God must have missed this part of it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You've come from the light. You live in the light. There is a light within you that cannot be dimmed. You are the light of the world. And if you find yourself sitting in the West, give yourself a pat on the back. Yay, my car blew up. Yay, I got fired. Yay, they walked out of my life. Bankruptcy, yay! <laughs> give yourself a pat on the back because you're willing to let go of and heal all of the ideas that kept you small. You think that a circumstance has anything over you? 
a car, a job, money, a court system, you think that they have anything over you, you are an incredible manifestation of the divine. You come from the light. You are creating the very molecules of your life. If you're in the darkness, return to the light. You don't have to go find it. It didn't go anywhere. It's right here, right now. Just return to it. As Abraham would say, just pivot. As John Waterhouse would say, turn away from the condition. Return to the light. Remember who you are. As we move into this idea of solstice, as the earth as a natural cycle goes closer and farther away from the sun, let that remind you that we always are at choice when things look the worst, when things appear to be darkest, to return to the light, to return to the light, to go back to who you are, to remember what you know, to think the thoughts that you know to think, to speak the words that will create that which you choose to experience, to look at anything that has manifested in your life as simply an outer expression of limiting beliefs that you are ready to heal and release. And you do that by returning to the light. Take a good look at yourself. You are a prosperous, healthy, precious, loved, wonderful, cosmic being. You came from the light. So return there. Yes. And so it is.